Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to America and we're going to have a look at a brewery that are very, very hyped actually. And I know some of the other beer tubers have reviewed this one, but um, this is a beer that has eluded me for quite some time actually. So for this review, we are going to go to Massachusetts, a little place called Charlton, and we're having a taste of my first beer from Treehouse Brewing Company. This one is the Julius, a New England IPA coming in at 6 8 percent ABV and it's supposed to be really pretty damn good actually this is a very very hyped beer this one so a huge thank you in this review to Chris Contreras an American guy who lives in Belgium he sent me some ridiculous beers over the last little while he was in New England for a trip recently and sent me this one along with another two treehouse beers and one from Aslan Beer Company as well that he said he was very curious for me to try so you'll see these videos appear over the next couple of weeks they probably will be spread out just a little bit to kind of keep things fresh and stuff but a huge thank you to Chris once again for making this review possible. That guy really has sent me some ridiculous beers over the last little while, but it's always awesome to have followers like that. So yeah, very curious to try this one, and I really hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well. It might be possible for me to visit Treehouse Brewing Company um, in October, August or September of 2020, actually. I've got a friend who's getting married in Connecticut, so I will be in that area and go and visit a few of the kind of well-known breweries around there at some point. So you might see some more out and about videos in America uh, sometime next year so keep an eye out for those too but yeah as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I'll do from Treehouse very soon and um, hopefully I can continue to add to these fairly regularly in the future because I know these guys are going through an expansion phase at the moment there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the American beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to whenever I get the opportunity and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Treehouse Brewing Company then. So Treehouse Brewing Company, as I mentioned earlier, are based in Charlton in Massachusetts and you'll find this place about halfway between Hartford and Connecticut, kind of to the southwestish, and then Boston in Massachusetts, um, which is right on the coast to the northeast. But the company was founded back by in 2011 by four friends. This is Dean Rohan, Nate Lanier, Damien Gaudreau, and Jonathan Weisbach, although I think the latter is not involved at the company anymore, but I'm not certain about that. Dean had a background as a plumber, Jonathan was a graphic designer, Damien co-owns and runs a gym, and Nate was a construction manager. But the guys basically started brewing as a hobby, and they homebrewed together from around 2008 in Nate's kitchen, and then they moved to a small 2.5 acre farm in Brimfield, which had a treehouse on the edge of it, and this was what would inspire the name of the brewery. But the brewery continued to grow over the coming years and they moved in 2013 to Corrin Farm in Monson which was owned by one of the founder's families and there they expanded their capacity from 150 US gallons which is 570 litres to 900 uh, US gallons which is 3,400 litres per brew and they also opened up a tap room on this site as well. So in 2016 the company bought land in Charlton and they planned the construction of a 53,000 square foot facility which is in real people measurements, the metric system which is better and um, the this is 5,000 square meters and this brewery went on to open in May of 2017 and it can produce 60,000 US barrels of beer per year and um, but that is 9.5 million liters for those of us that still use or that do use real people measurements I always make fun of the American measurement system and um, but the previous site at Monson is now home to their barrel aging program and uh, over the last few years they've also added a larger outdoor space to their new brewery and a mezzanine level too and um, in 2019 they purchased just a farm in Woodstock in Connecticut and they apparently plan to experiment a little bit here with barrel aging further and also some open fermentation and do some sour beers as well. Um, Nate is the founder who is the head brewer and according to Untapped, as of October 2019 when I'm filming this review for you they've produced around 280 different types of beer but you know these guys probably are best known for the kind of hazy New England style IPAs. This is what we always hear about over here in Europe when it comes to treehouse brewing. These guys in 
and Trillium are probably, these guys, Trillium, Alchemist, uh, Hill Farmstead, you know, these are the sort of breweries that we always hear about over here in Europe when it comes to the original New England ones. I guess other half and a few of the other breweries in the New York area are becoming a little bit more uh, well known as well. But this beer and this particular brewery you can't really um, get these in regular beer shops if you have a good beer shop you can usually get things like other half and stuff like that but to get alchemist and um, treehouse and trillium brewing is quite difficult actually so that makes it all the more special that chris sent me this beer to uh, to sweden so yeah i'm very happy with this one that's all you really need to know about treehouse brewing company for the moment that was all i was really able to find on these guys and um, but a very kind of well-known new england ipa brewery these guys and uh, hopefully i can go and visit them next year like I mentioned but yeah if you want to learn more about the brewery you can check out the brewery website in the description below you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and if you're interested in all the different beers that they do I'd recommend that you check out the uh, the rate beer and the untapped pages because they've got the lists of all the different things but um, yeah let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then so I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork of this one there. You can see the nice um, kind of treehouse there. I don't know if that would have been one of the ones that was uh, designed by Josh Wiesbach or something like that. Um, so yeah, it's interesting that. Um, but I really do like the artwork on these cans. A lot of the treehouse cans, from what I understand, are the, at least the ones that I have, they're very similar, they're just different colours. I don't know if the stouts and things that they do are any different, but when I go out to... Uh, to uh, New England next year. I'll make sure that I get a few stouts and things from Trillium and a few different beer styles and stuff like that when I visit Treehouse and Trillium and uh, Hill Farmstead and things. But yeah, nicely presented beer this one. It says on the back here, we're excited that you are holding a Treehouse Brewing Company flagship American IPA, Julius. Um, Julius is a bright tropical beer filled with notes of peach, mango, passion fruit and a melons of citrus. Um, and a me or a melange, Pfft, don't know, never heard of that word, but it's gentle on the palate while still incredibly hop saturated. It is the result of our uncompromising dedication to fresh, progressive, delightful beer. We hope you enjoy it with laughter, good cheer, and the uh, and then the company of those you love. Treehouse Brewing Company, and there you can see there is the brewery symbol down there. This can is a uh, one American pint which is 473 millilitres in real people measurements or the metric system as we also call it but um, yeah without further ado then let's get this guy out and we will get on with the tasting and this beer I think will be pretty damn fresh. Chris as I say he, he lives in American guy lives in Belgium and I think the beer was actually sent up from Belgium from what I understand. He sent it via DHL. I hate to think how much that, that dude has spent on postage sending me some of these beers, but it is hugely, hugely appreciated. So um, yeah, this looks really nice. We'll leave a little bit in the can. There's probably still about 150 mils or so in the can. There's probably about two thirds of it that's in here. But um, yeah, that looks really nice actually and it's kind of what you would expect from a New England IPA it's quite this one's almost just a little bit like peach juice or something like that it's actually not well, it's like a mix if you mix these two different oranges oh, I don't know if the other the background is yellow rather than orange but if you mix those two colors in the can together you'd probably end up with something a little bit akin to what color this beer is there's about a half finger of a frothy, I would say cream coloured head on this one, it's not perfect white, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones heading up towards the um, the bottom of that head there, but you know overall it looks pretty nice and this beer is pretty damn hazy, if I stick my fingers behind it you can see it is um, you know, really quite nice actually. This is pretty much what you would expect from a New England IPA. The thing that I'm very curious to see with this one is whether it's quite rustic and farmhousey or whether it's a bit more kind of creamy and oaty because when I tried um when I tried the heady topper I was surprised by the sort of um you know grainy vegetal kind of herbally sort of thing that the yeast was given it and um, because obviously most of the New England IPAs that we have are over here in uh, in Sweden from like Stieg Berriets and um, you know even Omnipoyo and some of the other breweries here and the ones in Denmark from like Gamma and stuff they're always very creamy and quite sweet whereas some of these original New England ones are a little bit more kind of they've almost got a little bit of the character that you'd expect of a Saison or, uh, or something like that so I'm curious to see just what end of the New England spectrum this particular beer is on actually but um, these ones are you know the original ones but let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on that smells really nice very very juicy actually there's almost a little bit of a kind of astringency to this beer too 
Um, it really, that's one of the juiciest IPA, the juiciest smelling New England IPAs that I've come across. Like it's almost just like you feel, you feel as if you've got a bit of water in your nose or something like that when you, uh, maybe you can really almost just smell the moisture off this one. Um, never quite come across one that's done that to my nose before in fairness. Um, yeah, that's, um, that's really nice. Um, I can see exactly why they say on the can there's peaches in there. It really does have that nice tropical fruity sharpness. Um, and that, that's lovely, this beer. So peachy straight away. I'm curious which hop they would have used in this one. I don't know if it would be like Idaho 7 or something like that. But this beer's been around a good few years. Um, and I don't think, you know, going by the aroma, I don't think it's like citra or anything like that. I'd be really curious to know what, as I say, what hops they've actually put in this beer. Because I've never come across one that can give you quite as big a peachy note. Is that so? If you know what hops are in this beer, let me know in the comment section below. I usually like playing guess the hops with these beers, but there's so many hops in America these days Sabro, um, Cashmere, and um, Jarillo, and stuff like that. You know, there's all these different hops that you go and you go into a home brewing shop and you see all of these ones you've never heard of. Um, but yeah, there's some of this, it smells very, very nice. This, and um, we'll talk about the malt base first and then move on to the fruits though. Um, so with this beer, to me, you can smell a lovely kind of white bready base to it. Um, it's not overly kind of pungent. Sometimes when there's a lot of wheat used in the, the beer, as, as is the case in some of the, the European New England IPAs, you can really smell just a, a little bit of astringency from the wheat. But this beer, the, the bready base that this beer has smells very, very smooth. You can definitely pick up a little bit of the oaty creaminess, but to me, it smells as a little bit kind of lighter um, than you'd get from some of the European uh, New England IPAs as well. So that's a kind of interesting comparison to make. So the aroma from the malt base of this beer, it feels very light but also very full at the uh, at the same time, which is quite interesting. Um, there is a little bit of a biscuity sweetness to this one. You can definitely pick that up here. Um, I think going by the, the way that the juiciness of the fruit is there, the other thing I know, it's not necessarily the... Um, the hops that the fruit's coming from, with some of these very high attenuating yeasts that you can get, for example, the ones they use in brute IPAs and stuff like this, and fake yeasts that we have here in Scandinavia, um, you can get quite a lot of these interesting kind of fruity notes, so perhaps it's the yeast that's contributing to the fruity notes in this beer as well. It's not just the hops, we need to remember that. But yeah, malt base is kind of what you'd expect. It just comes across as being very, very light. And um, but there is a little bit of that sort of farmhousey note in there. That sort of it's a mix of like herbal, grainy, um, kind of rusticy type things. You can really smell a little bit of that in this beer as well. Maybe there's one or two slightly woody undertones to this as well. Um, on the green side of the hops, then. Um, I would say that this beer it leans towards the floral side of things. There is a good little bit of that floral aromaticity in there. You'll get a little bit of a lighter grassiness, and I think there's a wee touch of earthiness. That could be, I think there might be a little bit of mosaic or something in here, um, just from the way the earthiness is coming out. Um, but when you take the aroma in more deeply, that's when you smell this really nice kind of oaty, the sort of creaminess mixing in with all the fruits. I agree with the fact that there's peach in here. I think there's a little bit of a, a sort of... Um, there's definitely some mangoes to this. There's not really like a stronger, more pungent tropical fruit. Like sometimes, quite often, you'll get grapefruit and passion fruit, but not really in this beer. I do agree with what they were saying on the can about the peaches. Apricots are definitely in there as well. Um, I think a bit of pineapple too, in fairness. And I want to say there's maybe a little bit of a kind of slightly tangerine, citrusy note to this one. But I think that the more tropical fruits are what... Um, are really dominating the aroma here, but in terms of its aroma, to me, this one comes across as uh, very, very interesting. So do make sure you take a little bit of time and just enjoy that aroma before you get stuck into the beer. And it's it's always cool for me to compare the to think about how these uh, original American ones sort of compare with the uh, the ones that we have here in Europe, actually. So um, yeah, let's just have a taste of this beer and see how we go on. This one is the Julius, a New England IPA. It's 6.8% from Treehouse Brewing Company over in uh, Massachusetts in America. A huge thank you to Chris once again for making this review possible. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skull. Oh, yeah. That's really pretty nice, actually. Again, this one, it's lighter than I thought it was going to be. 
Um, it's very, very kind of smooth as well. But in fairness, one thing I did read was that at the original brewery in Monson, they had um, a well that they kind of pumped their water out, and they said that that contributed a little bit to the um, the feel that these beers have. And I have to say, the sort of mouth feel that you get off of this one compared to the other um, New England IPAs I've had from the states is quite, um, you know, it is it is a little bit different actually. This is very light and very kind of wet, I think, compared to other um, New Englands. But yeah. But I'll say straight away, this is a really nice beer. Um, it's scarily drinkable. And that's one of the, you know, that is one of the things. With these New England IPAs, you can, compared with the West Coast ones, you can drink a good few of these and it will hit you later. Whereas the West Coast IPAs, I always found, they are a little bit more kind of steady and you realise how much you've had. They feel a little bit boozier than these beers. Um... So that's an interesting point to make about this one. And when I was in the States, when I was at um, Toppling Goliath in Iowa, you know, this beer, this brewery's in the middle of nowhere and people are coming in and having like three and four of these and then driving home and I'm sitting there like, what? Um, you know, it's the, I think the drink driving thing is a, pro is a bit of a problem in America with these breweries, especially when you've got the automatic cars rather than the manuals. But... Um, yeah, it's it's an in, it's interesting that these New England IPAs are ridiculously drinkable, and this is one of the most drinkable ones that I've ever come across. So keep that in mind, actually. Um, I don't know how many of this style I've reviewed, but this is lovely. Um, let's kind of break down the flavour a little bit then. This is really interesting. So straight away with this beer... You can feel that nice pale bready, uh, pale malty, white bready character. That just blankets the middle of your tongue. The further you go into the aftertaste, it sort of smooths out a little bit, and it just the, the flavour just the bready notes in this beer almost gets a little bit. They almost just get a little bit thicker, to be honest. You can feel some of the oaty notes in there. They come out a little bit in the aftertaste as well. They're not quite as thick as I say as compared to some of the other. New England IPAs that I've had, and I think, to be honest, I would be tempted to say that the ones we have in Scandinavia are a bit thicker than the American ones generally, um, which is, is, is kind of interesting, although in fairness, other half, the other half ones I've had have been very kind of big and gloopy sort of thing, but um, this to me is, de is definitely one of the lighter mouthfield uh, New England IPAs that I've had, which is interesting. But that, the way the oatiness comes out in this one, usually the thickness comes from the wheat and the oats that you put in this beer style. And to me, you can feel both of those there, but they just don't, they don't thicken up in the same way as when you go into the aftertaste. And that's what makes this beer really quite drinkable. And it's, it's cool when you review these because you can always talk about these little quirks that these different beers had. Uh, I have got ones that are a bit higher in alcohol and again when you go higher in alcohol you've got a more you've got a bigger malt content and maybe the other ones will be a little bit thicker than this one. This is probably considered the more session uh, member of the range if you like. But uh, they do have King Julius as well which is a double version of this beer. Hopefully I can review that at some point in the future. But um, this is a very nice drinkable I uh, New England IPA. There's maybe a teensy te Usually in, in the European ones you'll get a little bit of a biscuity sweetness too in the very centre of your palate. You don't really get that in this beer. Um, I would say when I was thinking with the aroma that this that there would be a little bit of that kind of farmhousey, um, sort of herbally kind of saison-y type quality to this beer. It actually doesn't really have that to be honest. It's a very smooth um, centre of the palate for me. Yeah, very, very smooth um, tasting beer, this one. I can see why this one got um, got really popular, actually. This is it's very, very drinkable beer. Um, I like how that goes together. Um, on the hoppy side of things, then, back corners of the palate, there is a little bit of earthiness there. As you come further forward, it just smooths out a little bit on the sides of your palate. You'll reach the front the front corners of your tongue and you'll get a little bit of that um, floral aromaticity there. It's not overly spicy but it's quite a bright um, floral aromaticity but it just has a teensy little bit of a dank quality to it as well but then as you go around the front curve of the palate the beer is just a little bit lighter and more uh, and more grassy as well. Then behind the front curve of the palate you've got that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to come out of the beer. 
and for me, um, there, there's quite a lot going on in this one. When you go to the back of that oily bubble, there's a little bit of that sort of slightly, it feels as if there's a little tiny bit of a passion fruit. You know, I always find that grapefruit and passion fruit, they're quite pungent flavours. They almost feel a little bit dark. And if you go to the very back of your palate there, there is a little bit of that grapefruity passion fruit thing. The fact that that's there, and when I consider the other flavours that are in this beer, it makes me think there's a wee bit of... Um, Citra in there. The other thing that it could be is Galaxy. Galaxy's quite a, a strong um, kind of passion fruity hop, but in fairness, um, Citra is a little bit more subtle in its grapefruit flavours, and I would think it's probably more likely Citra that's given you that. Um, and when I consider how old this beer is as well, that probably makes a bit more sense because Galaxy's been on the scene for uh, a shorter time than. Um, it's, it's been on the scene for a shorter time than uh, than Galaxy has, and Galaxy was an Australian hop. I think Galaxy would have been coming out a few years after um, this beer would have been released, in fairness. But um, it's it, the way that the fruit notes come out is nice. Like I say, a little bit of that darker passion fruit. You know, as you move further forward on the palate, you'll start to get a little bit of the kind of mangoey um, quality out of this beer. I can definitely pick up. Um, there's a wee bit of the peach in the flavour, but I think the peach is more prominent in the aroma than it is in the flavour, in fairness. But then as you move further forward from that mango quality, maybe it's a little bit apricotty. I do want to say there's a wee bit of a, a kind of pineapple note there as well. And the further you go into the aftertaste, it's a mixture of all of these different things that just linger there in this beer, which is interesting. But in fairness, when you take this beer in, you will notice that the um, you will notice a little bit that there is a bit of um, a kind of sharpness in the beginning, and that's where the sort of peachy flavours come out. And then, almost on the very tip of the palate, the peachy notes just kind of linger there a little bit. And the further you go into the aftertaste, it just sort of mellows out a little bit and just kind of smooth. Uh, these flavours just kind of smooth out and lean. They start to lean a little bit more towards the apricotty, pineappley, mangoey sort of things, which is interesting. But yeah, there's a bit of passion fruit in there, and also a little bit of a kind of. Um, there's almost a little bit of like a lychee gooseberry thing when you go into the aftertaste of this as well. There's quite a little bit of complexity there, and again, when it's got that level of complexity, that makes me think that there's citra in here because it can give you these really nice gooseberry, um, kind of gooseberry lychee sort of notes too. But overall, a really really nice beer this one in terms of its flavour. I really like how this uh, how this goes together. The thing that's different for me about this one compared to others is just the, the mouthfeel and the way that these flavours come out actually. But that's one of the great things about reviewing lots of these different beers. Yeah, that's lovely. Um, so in terms of the mouthfeel then, I would say that this beer is at the bottom end of the mid-bodied category. Um, Carbonation is very smooth. The mouthfeel of this beer overall is very smooth. It's definitely not the thickest of New England IPAs that you're going to come across, and the mouthfeel to me really leans towards the wetness. Like I was talking about earlier, these guys have their own, uh, their original brewery in Monson, they had their own well, and they said that the water that they pumped out of there, they kind of said initially that they were an off-the-grid brewery, and um, you know the the water will make us a significant um, difference to the beer. We, I'm quite sensitive to that, of course, having um, you know grown up in Scotland, and we always talk about the quality of water in whiskey and things like that. But when you have the beers here in Scandinavia, um, when you, especially when you try some of the Norwegian ones or the breweries from the very north of Sweden, the Icelandic beers are the same. When you try um, these beers, you can really taste the quality of the water. And it's quite interesting with this one too. I'd be interested to know whether they're treating the water at their new brewery so that it tastes like the water from the um, from the original well that they had. I wouldn't be surprised if they are. I know that treating water is a lot more common in America than it is, it is over here in Europe, actually. Like quite often, it's they always make a big deal about natural water and things like that over here. Um, so yeah, that's an interesting point to uh, to make about this this particular beer actually. But yeah, it feels very it feels it's this is one of the wetter New England IPAs that I've come across, and it's it's quite light and it feels quite clean in that sense as well. Actually, probably the, the sort of cleanest feeling IPA that I've had from uh, from the states actually the New England IPA that I've had from the states. Um, in terms of the malt base, then 
I would say very very smooth this one. There's not really much sweetness to this beer in terms of the malt base, although like I said the oatiness does make it sweeten up a little bit the further that you go into the aftertaste. So yeah, you get a little bit of sweetness out of this one, but not overly much. And there's not really a biscuity presence to this beer as well, which is which is interesting. Um, I do reckon that some of the fruity qualities you're getting out of this is coming from the yeast as well. So you can feel the fruitiness uh, kind of comes around the edge of the palate as well. And normally you just get that um, when you add fruit to the beer. Normally when you actually add fruit into the beer, it will suppress a little bit of the green side of the hops. But in terms of IBUs and things like that and bitterness, I think we're talking around 30-ish IBUs with this beer. I, don't, I would be surprised if it's higher than that. Um, although in fairness, it might be because the beer's a little bit fresh. It could be up near 40, but I would be surprised if it's any more than that. 40, an absolute maximum. Um, but yeah, nice little bit of bitterness to the beer. Smoothness uh, in the malt base, and you've got a lovely juicy fruity quality to this one as well. So um, yeah, this is just a really nice, easy drink in New England IPA, this one. Probably one of the lighter and cleaner feeling New England IPAs that I've had from the States so far, actually. Uh, some of the ones that I was having in Chicago, um, were absolutely, they were quite thick, but I think this one is one of the lighter ones that you're going to come across, actually. So a really, really nice beer, this one, and it's cool to finally try one of these beers that has been quite hyped for uh, for a little while, actually. So let's just leave it at that. A lovely, very easy drink in New England IPA, this one, and it's cool to finally try something from this brewery that is very, very hyped. So, yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Treehouse Brewing Company. You will see two more reviews from these guys at some point fairly soon. I do have another one that Chris sent me as well. A huge thank you to him again for making this review possible. Make sure you check out my social media and if you get the chance to try some of these Treehouse beers, definitely have a go at them because they're a very, very hyped brewery. And hopefully, like I said, I can film an out and about video at their brewery when I'm over in the States again next year. So yeah, thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. This one is the Julius New England IPA, a very nice, light, easy drinking New England IPA from Treehouse Brewing Company in Charlton. Uh, Massachusetts over in America. Until the next time, slanger just now, and I'll catch you guys soon. Slanger, school, cheers.